Is there a better sound, Michael? Hey, somebody's in. applause when you walk. Somebody's in. I mean, if we got in, is it? Oh, yeah, look. We thought, we thought we were going to get the, uh, the Ruttles overspilled, didn't we? <laughs> we uh, hopefully have. You are the Ruttles overspilled. Yeah, I'm Paul again, and um, I suppose there's guests and special guests, but it's not often um, we are graced with an eyewitness. <laughs> Please, Mike McCartney. <laughs> And, so, by the way, Mike McCartney, there's a film coming up called Hard Day's Night, OK? <laughs> guess who was there and guess what jacket he wore <laughs> on that night that. in London and Liverpool Premier. And in fact, if you can Was see, it made for you? If you can see... Oh, dear, I've taken my mic off. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do that. For the ones on the front row... I think it's, oh, here. You can just see in here, <laughs> it says, Mike McCartney, June 1964. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's the real thing. Yep. <laughs> Look and learn, youngsters. <laughs> so what's your secret, champ? Hey. What is it, yoga? Have you, have you stayed in shape? Secret is um, never wearing it. <laughs> That works. So we're going to screen the film um, Hard Day's Night, 1964, Dick Lester, in about 10, 15 minutes, but Mike and I are going to yak first. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, the Let management. You sense, you sense the old-fashioned charm. A fitty hole. A fitty now, hole. Uh, um, when um, I didn't realise, but uh, apparently there's a they found um, slapstick have sourced a, a two or three minute short oh. film of is it uh, is it the Liverpool Premier? I guess it, it must be the Liverpool I Premier. I saw it before. Um, it is. It is. We came. Up. So what we'll do is maybe we'll screen that first. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a look at that and. Um, are you in it? We, we, we might be see you in it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. <laughs> so this is um, July 1964. Uh, if you could run it in um, <laughs> in the centre of Liverpool. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> Said Costi this you know, when it comes on, like you know, because it, it was a magic era. I've got to tell Did you. Did you go to both premieres? Yeah, I, was, uh, I, I mean, you went to everything, didn't you? Yeah. Well, they invite you. They make the mistake of inviting you. Yeah. <laughs> and in uh, the London one, it was great. But you can play it any time. We'll shut up. <laughs> and uh, there was... Oh, here we Here go. it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10th of July, 64. So this would have been, what, a week after the... That'll be British Eagle plane coming up from London uh, to Liverpool Airport. <coughs> There's our kid and his uh, chums. There, and I think you might see me and my dad at the back of them. There's the family. <laughs> <laughs> there is... So this is the arrival at Speak Airport. Yeah, there's David Jacobs behind the Beatles. If any of you remember, very smoothly spoken gentleman. Yeah. So yeah. they would have flown up from London to be... Yeah, we all flew up from London, same plane. Brian Epstein offered me to, to be a pop star like my brother, but I turned him down to be in scaffold. There's more of the family. <laughs> Press conference here. Where Derek Taylor, see that guy's face that's on the, the right? That's the manager. That's, that's the sound. Derek Taylor. We're trying to do a thing on him. He's, he's oh, look at extraordinary. 
This is more like you look at this. For look. The football teams coming up. Yeah. Trophy, look at that ambulance though, <laughs> and that dirty town hall. That's Liverpool town hall. That and the Liver Bell were black because of all the pollution. In the <laughs> that's his Louis Kaplan, the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, on the Liverpool town. No, he's hall. the alderman, and that's the Lady Mayoress. Well, yes. well, well. Yeah. God, so someone was actually digging them out for going to London and they were, they were just catching the end of an argument. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's never oh, no. stopped, does it? Oh, when no, no, no. Was no. it the same? Oh, no, when you're lawyer, when you're li Liverpool, you're brought up in Liverpool and you've got Liverpool fans and you move out, you know, like, uh, like the insanity of the council uh, knocking down, filling in the cavern. How insane can you get the... I said, by the time, uh, later on, um, well... You I'm, I'm from the decade after you, but you know, by the time we were going out in the 70s, the cabin was literally paved over. Yes, it was. For a, was it for a like car, a car park, park, wasn't it? Yeah. In fact, I, I can remember being, you know, me and my brothers and all our mates, you know, what am I, about 15 years behind you, but when we were going out in the 70s, there was always this feeling that we'd missed it. You did. Thank <laughs> you very much. That was going to be my next question, you know. But, did we, Mike? Did you we really yeah. did. It was like a faint sense. What's that um, lovely expression that well, it, Kevin Brown about? The parade's gone by. Yeah. It's like you'd missed it, lad. <laughs> and even you'd get older, people going, it's not the same now. And now watching films like that, you know, um, I mean, there was still, later on in the 70s, there was, you know, there was even groups came up and there was a bit of excitement, but it wasn't like that. No, that it was, honestly, only people of that, my age, <laughs> old, uh, would appreciate, and particularly if you're from Liverpool and you, and you were there at the time. Our kid once said to me, uh, don't ever forget, Michael, you were there. I was there. We were there. And they, they were very much their own world. You will see it in this film coming up. Uh, they just were just the Fab Four. They, they existed in this little bubble. And, and it was extraordinary. But there was to, a storm. To pop in and out of the Yeah, bubble. you were in, you, well, he's right though, isn't he? Because you were in, and your family, mm. your dad, everyone, um, you were in the eye of the storm as much as they were. You yeah. Know, you were part yeah. of it. Yeah, we were. Didn't right. you have to move house at this period? Or? <laughs> I did. Fawthorn Road. By the way, anybody who wants to go to Fawthorn Road, the National Trust have uh, bought it because of my photographs. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I just, whilst I'm here, Genesis have put out a magnificent book called Mike McCartney. I hope you've got it, Paul. It's called Mike McCartney's Early Liverpool. I kept dropping heavy hints. Well, you better start saving up now. You know when books are really expensive? You it's know, very, <laughs> very expensive. The deluxe yeah. one is twice the price, and that's sold out. But it's beautiful. It's all these old photographs. So of that when era, did, oh, it was I being... It's a shame we've only got 10 minutes. Let's get on with it. Why, when did you, you said, talking about pictures, when did you pick up a camera? Was there one in the house or? It was the, Co my mama died. It was the Kodak, uh, <laughs> by the way. I can assure you, see, you see what you're seeing here and all this Beatle mania, all this thing, scaffold mania, well, far more important, obviously, <laughs> hmm. is none of this would have happened if my beautiful mum, uh, at the age of 12, I hadn't have gone up there. <laughs> oh, every time I talk about this. Sorry about this. Just uh, uh, it is. Uh, but if she'd have lived, uh, there would have been no none of this. Why? Would have been no scaffold there. My mum was a nurse, a midwife, a health visitor, and the most important thing. She was the breadwinner, uh, and the most important thing was getting a career, so we would have never been allowed to have, but um, my dad, when mum had died, my dad bought me a banjo and our kid a, a guitar, and then a set of drums fell in. He was a musician? My dad, oh no, not a musician, he was a cotton salesman, and he, at night, he lived in Everton when it was one of the worst slums in Europe, mm. and so he knew about poverty, and so to escape that poverty, and to get a couple of extra bob, and y you think of it, uh, to get a bit of like being on stage like this, and people clapping in the audience, and, and, and liking you, he got that bug 
from there, but had to go into the cotton business. Just a little sideline. Jim Max Band was, was his uh, band. But when Mum died, he never forgot that, and so bought uh, <laughs> and a, a, a set of drums came came into into the house. And it was here. Oh, this here we go like this. It was here in Bristol. I was doing a one-man show of Great Britain called Sex, Drugs, <laughs> Rock and Roll. I wish. That was the title of the show. I did a little pub here in Bristol and done the show. And uh, somebody said, hey, one of the quarry men's here today. I said, oh, me, blimey, I haven't seen them for a, a bit. I said, yeah, it's OK. So he comes over. He said, oh, great, Mike. They were great in Fawthling Road, our, our old house. I said, oh, yeah, I remember John and, and you lot coming in. And he said, and you, you know, that drum kit, and you used to play drums. For, I said, what? Well, you played drums with us in uh, Fourth and Road. I said, did I? <laughs> I had totally forgot I was the Beatles' first drum <laughs> still <player. laughs> It's just the truth. That's the truth. So what, your mum... Was your mum died. Was she just averse to... Was she just didn't want... Well, mum would... She didn't like music, but she, did, she wanted you to do a proper job or... Pro a proper job. She would have insisted us going... Uh, keeping on school, going to university... And getting and you did you passed your eleven plus yeah you unbelievable the, you went to the grammar school yeah Liverpool Institute High School for boys where there was the hierarchy in you know schools and they are the form below you don't talk to them quite right right quite right so our, our kid John was next door in the art college then our kid was in the innie we used to call Liverpool Institute High School for boys innie uh, our kid was there who never talked to the form below him called George. George never talked to the form below him, called me. I never talked to Bill Kenwright, who was below me. <laughs> and below Bill was, who was that guy that tried to bankrupt uh, Liverpool? That politician. That Derek Hatton. Derek Hatton Derek was Hatton below was uh, Bill. <laughs> no one talked to him. Yeah. Were you in the school plays? <laughs> no, because Kenwright was in the plays. Well, wasn't he a famous Shylock at school? And it's funny you should say that. My first oh, life, to do a us theatricians, <laughs> us thesps, us actors. <coughs> uh, I was in a Dylan. I've got the program still, mm. and I've got and Bill Kenwright's on the other page, and Peter Sissons, the newsreader. There's a newsreader who I got with a water bomb. <laughs> from never forget these things. Yeah, no, no. Do you know what, what was it? Somebody breathing or a baby? <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and uh, do you remember, uh, I don't know, in water bombs where you got your lunch and then, then you got your uh, brown bag and so you go to the water fountain quickly, you've got to be quick because it's a bag, you know, <laughs> fill it up with water and I'm at the top yard, the upper yard of the Liverpool Institute of High School for Boys and there is one of these prefects down there, we ate it prefects, so ready, got to be quick. all over him. <laughs> and so we're up at the thing, he'd all now. <laughs> he comes straight up to the upper yard, puts his hand on my shoulder, right McCartney, to the headmaster, the Baz. And so you went to the <coughs> Baz and you got caned several times. Sorry. <laughs> we could be talking about the 1830s. <laughs> <isn't we? laughs> it was. It was like Christian we'll Brothers. We probably will. Yeah. Um, well, we haven't got too long left. No. I, I, you know what? I wikied the film last night, you know, the way you do in prep. Do you want to know anything I just about wanna, the I, film? I, incidentally, are you in the film? Or are you in it anyway? You know, like you get... Uh, they said Patty Boyd was in it, Phil Collins was in it somewhere. And yeah. Or are uh, you in it? Did they let you shoot any of this? Are you in the background or...? I was there... Uh, I can't... I don't Were think you there I for the have. shoot? I was there whilst it was being sh shot. I remember going into Pinewood or wherever the hell it was, this film studio. Shepperton. Shepperton. Yeah. And going into the dressing room, and then this, you're going to see him now, uh, was the roadie, Norman Rossington. Yeah? yeah. He was the roadie. Was it Wilfred Bramble that was made, or was that help when he was my granddad? Yeah, this is it. Oh, was in here? This is it. Oh, great. Okay. And the film, I mean, the, st the, the film, it says here, Oh, good. Um, it says here, 
I mean, essentially, but the, the, the film was a, it was a film was a, essentially a promo, wasn't it? Or it was a. It yeah, Tony was short. It, it was an. It was low budget. It was United Artists. Um, they didn't fancy it themselves. They gave them two hundred thousand pounds apparently to shoot it, which is equivalent to about four million today. So really low budget. They were looking to make money on the soundtrack LP. Yes. This was considered a really quick craze. Yeah, and before uh, merchandising. And they, exactly right. They didn't have merchandising started all this. then. So, so this 1964 and, and this film, which is it's a kind of satire on Beatlemania, isn't it? Yeah, it's about yeah. If the band has yes. gone down to London to do a yes. gig on the telly and it's all yeah. about what happens. Um, but, and again, because it says here, um, as it turned out, it says the film broke records. It grossed over £20,000 just in that one theatre in the first few weeks. Oh, great. That was uh, it. Then made tens of millions, you know, in the ensuing years. Um, so it's become a, you know, a, a, a big seller. Do you want to hear about the night it, ha it opened in London, in the theatre in London? When you were wearing that jacket? When I was wearing this jacket, June. Uh, and uh, Princess Margaret was Princess there. Princess Margaret, she? Lord Snowden. Snowden, all the Lord Mayors, the whole thing. The aunties, not the uncles, uh, they were, I think, I don't know, this sounds right to me, my Liverpool uh, logic. Uh, only the aunties are being invited down to go to the premiere, pictures of them and us. Uh, and I suddenly realised why, if the uncles had come down and then gone to the pub before the. the <laughs> The premiere, that would have been a very so they no uncles, just the <laughs> just the aunties. So we're now in the, just like you are there, and the lights are going to go down, right? And we're up there, and uh, it, Margaret and Snowden there in front, all the royals, all the Lord Mayors, etc. And the lights go down to black, and suddenly this little voice uh, comes through the night. Guess who? And they said, put another shilling in the meter. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> what was I going to say? The I'll uh, tell you another quickly about... Yeah, you, you do that. I'll tell I, want you I wanted to just, I just quickly reading. want to read some of these... Um I'll tell you about Norm Rossington first. Went on the set of this and uh, went into the dressing room and the Norm Rossington walks in and uh, our kid says, oh, by the way, Norm here is, uh, he's our roadie in this film, and he's from Liverpool. So I said, oh, <coughs> great, hiya, Norm. He said, oh, hello, how are you? I said, what? I, I said, oh, sorry, oh, didn't my brother just say you're from Liverpool? Oh, yes, I'm terribly sorry, Michael, but you've got to understand that when we came down from Liverpool, from a very proud man uh, of Liverpool, but when we came down to London, uh, to exist, to survive with the Liverpool accent uh, was non-existent. You know, you couldn't get a job. So I'm afraid now, this is my actual accent, this is how I talk now, but I can go to Liverpool when I want. I'll, s I'll do it in the film for you. <laughs> so that is how, how about that for us actors. Did you ever do it? Did you go down to London? Did you live in, I wish you had longer. But you know, Never but lived. Was it the same when you were a kid in Liverpool? I mean, the, the obligation was, the expectation was, you'd have to go to London to, to do... What uh, was. Well, that was the centre. Uh, and when you went down... <laughs> when you went down to London, before the mania broke, right, you'd go down to London, and anything north of the Wash, anything north of Watford, was, to them, to Londoners, was hinterland, right? Was Maybe the jungles. There's a jungle, there's nothing up there that didn't exist. So you go down, this is just before the mania hit London, right? And you go down, it's great, and you go to a party and for, for posh people and lovely, etc. Oh, hello, chaps. Uh, hello, uh, how are you? My name's Peregrine. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, where are you chaps from? Oh, we're from Liverpool. Anyway, you were saying, Charles? <laughs> Li I swear, that's exactly what they'd be talking to. The Charles, you were saying. <laughs> and totally, because they're no good to you, you're no good to them. <coughs> and so you go back to the mania, come to this film, be just after this film, go down again. Same sort of party, same sort of, and hello, <coughs> how are you? My name's Tarquin, what's your name? 
Uh, I'm sorry, we're from uh, Scapa and we're from Liverpool. Liverpool, good Lord, chaps, chaps, Cecilia, come <laughs> over here. Peregrine, come over here. These chaps are from Liverpool. How oh, jolly good, how are you? You're so welcome. And they'd always go into a Liverpool accent, right? And it always came out with, oh, oh, great, it's wonderful, this is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> they met you halfway, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they met you somewhere like in Solihull. Yeah. Uh, that is the North-South Divide. Yeah. It says, <laughs> it, it says here, and uh, this film's been credited with influence in both the kaleidoscopic swinging London spy thrillers uh, and by its like technique my. of cutting images to the beat of the music, Dick Lester, paving the way for modern music videos. Mm -hmm. uh, years later, Dick Lester said he'd been labelled the father of MTV. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. yeah. I was at the start of MTV in New York. They said to me, go, Mike, there's this new thing called MTV down by the docks. And so I went down to this, just a little shack. And so I walked, it said MTV on the, the door. So I walked in and said, hi, uh, Mike McCartney, for an interview with so-and-so. No, no, we don't want any trouble. No trouble. I said, sorry? What are you talking about? No, no, you, you, Ozzy Osbourne. No, no, we don't want any of that. Talking about brummies. They just had Ozzy Osbourne come in at the height of his debauchery. <laughs> Drugs, drink, etc. And they, because it was a funny northern voice, near enough Birmingham, near enough to, to them. No, no, we don't want any trouble. No, no, please, sorry. No, no, it's, it's okay, I'm from Liverpool. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Oh, yeah, you come in. That was the start of this thing called MTV. You were there? <laughs> I was there. You're like a Zelig figure, aren't you? You were there in, <laughs> in the background of everything. Right, listen, we're, we're going to have to screen the film. Um, yeah. I just want to read you a couple of the... Um, Zelig. A couple of... Yeah, Zelig. <laughs> Zelig McCartney. <laughs> the Village Voice. These are some of the, the critiques at the time. Because people loved it. It was, a, it was a hit. Village Voice called it the Citizen Kane of mm. jukebox musicals. Wow. Time magazine said it was one of the smoothest freshest, funniest films ever made for purposes of exploitation. <laughs> wow. Roger Ebert, the great Roger Ebert critic, described it as one of the great life-affirming landmarks of the movies. Wow. How about that? Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is my favourite. Brendan Gill in the, New in the New Yorker wrote, uh, though I don't pretend to understand what makes these four rather odd-looking boys so fascinating to so many scores of millions of people, I admit that I feel a certain mindless joy <laughs> stealing over me <laughs> as they caper about, <laughs> uttering sounds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, joy. Mike McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> uttering his own sounds. Are we going to watch it? We're going to go and watch it, yeah. Good.